Here we have a very typical chapter four question, at least as far as exams or term tests are concerned. Um, I'll explain why that is, how I know that this is uh, very typical, once I've read through the question, because I'm going to need to refer to, um, to the setup here. So it says, temperatures have varied a significant amount last winter. A sample of temperatures was taken at noon each day over a 10-day period in January last year. And then we have a, a table here, most of it's not filled out, but in the table we have 10 different data points. Keep in mind they said that um, we took a sample, a sample of temperatures each day uh, over a 10-day period. So we've got 10 different temperatures. Okay, so we've got a list of data here. Now what we're going to be doing with this and what it is that makes this a typical exam question is that unlike in the textbook where you're just going to focus for one section on the mean and then a different section you'll focus on the median and so on, on the exam or on a term test, you're going to be looking at one set of data where you have to answer um, just about everything that there is in chapter 4 that you could have to answer about a set of data. So for example in parts A, B, and C we have all of our measures of central tendency. We've got the mean, the median, and the mode. Now actually missing from this list is the geometric mean, but the geometric mean only applies to uh, compounding growth like, like uh, rates of return or interest rates on invested money or on loans. And you can see from what we've been given here in our setup, we don't have anything like percentages or uh, rates of interest or compounding growth here. What we have are temperatures that are read uh, off of a thermometer um, in the month of January. So just 10 straight numbers, 10 uh, temperature readings uh, that were taken during a period last year. So geometric mean would not apply here. It only applies when you have compounding growth. So what we do have is we have all of the other measures of central tendency. Okay, so that's the mean, the median, and then the mode. We also have the measures of variation. We've got the range, the variance, the standard deviation, and even the coefficient of variation, which isn't really a measure of variation. Um, well, it is sort of an indirect measure, but again, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Now, after that, we've got a couple of add-ons. Um, part H, it's kind of a trick question. Compute the sum of deviations from the mean that's just going to end up being zero. I'll explain why that's the case and um, and uh, why this is sort of a trick question when we get to part H. And then finally uh, we have measures of position. We've got to compute the 30th percentile. Okay, so what we're going to need to do in order to be able to answer these questions is actually there's a couple of things we're going to have to do. First of all, um, when we're being asked about things like the median or uh, the 30th percentile, these are measures that rely on understanding the order. Actually, even the range is going to benefit from this. It would be good to have our data put into order to be able to accurately answer part B, part D, and part I. So I'm going to go through my data and I'm going to put it into order. Actually, let's, uh, let's do that now. So we'll get the data into order, and um, let's see, what is my, you could do this highest to lowest or lowest to highest, uh, there's no real convention for your class so it doesn't make any difference. I like to do lowest to highest, so my very lowest value is a 2 or a negative 2, and so I'll cross that out. Uh, make sure when you are transcribing data like this that you do cross things out. It makes it a lot easier to not grab the same data twice. Um, that might seem like a really simple uh, error to avoid anyways, but keep in mind that if you make any mistakes in writing out or rewriting the data over here, that'll affect pretty much every single answer that follows, and they're not going to give you too many marks. Um, you're going to be repeatedly penalized for the same mistake, which would be a horrible thing to have happen uh, for what should be e an easy uh, set of questions to answer. So be really careful when you're transcribing your data here. Okay, so my next one is a zero, and then uh, there's a one, and then what have I got? There's no two, but I do have a three and a four, and then uh, six. Okay, and I think all the rest of them are sevens. One, two, three, four sevens. Okay, so I've got all of my data here. These are my x values. x is simply just whatever is being recorded. 
So this was the first thing that I said you need to do to be able to answer all those questions. It's um, putting them into order. Now you could try and get away with not doing this. Uh, I don't know why you would bother. It doesn't take much time. But um, you can go th fishing through your data here to look for the highest and the lowest when that becomes important. But it would still make the median very challenging to find. So I would recommend uh, whenever you're being asked for things like the median or the range or percentiles, start off by putting your data into order. Now the next thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to find some sums. I'm going to need to find the sum of x. I'm also going to need to find um, the sum of x squared. And this is as good of a time as any to talk a little bit about the importance of not getting these um, confused with another quantity that uh, comes up sometimes. Very often people will confuse the sum of x in brackets squared with the sum of x squared. Now eventually we're going to have to use both of these, but you have to be very careful to pay attention to what you should have learned in, I don't know, either early high school or late uh, grade school before that, the order of operations. When I learned it, it was called bed mass, and you start at the top and go down to the bottom. You might have some variation on this. Um, sometimes instead of a B, they have a P here. Uh, sometimes D and M are switched in their order. A and S are switched in their order. But effectively, you're going to end up following the same order if you pay attention to, these, uh, to this little acronym. The first one is brackets. And it basically says, if you have any brackets in your formula, like we've got here in this first quantity, you should ignore everything else and just focus on solving what's, in, what's inside the brackets. Next down the list comes exponents. Exponents are, are powers that you've raised your value to. So for example, here we've raised x to the power of 2, whereas over here we've raised all of the sum of x to the power of 2. So you can see already how these two different formulas could lead to two different results. Here I'm only squaring my x values, whereas here I'm squaring the entire sum of x values. And then comes division, and then multiplication, and then addition, and subtraction. And you have to keep in mind that whenever you see a summation sign, this means addition. This is an exponent. Here I've got three things. I've got um, brackets, I've got addition, and I've got my exponent. So when you're performing one or the other of these, you can see that there's different operations that are involved, and that's going to affect how you end up coming to your final answer. When I calculate my sum of x here, when you go through this list and you add up all of these values, this comes out to be 40. And in order to get my sum of x squared values, you might be tempted to just square the 40. But keep in mind, that's not what's being asked for here. If you look at the sum of x squared, and you think about the order of operations, so the sum of x squared, I've got addition and exponents, what should I do first? Well, there's no brackets, but there are exponents. So that means I have to handle the exponents first. I have to effectively ignore that I have a summation sign and only focus on the exponents. So that means don't sum things up first. Don't get the sum of x first, the 40, but instead square all of the x values first, because that's the first thing that happens in the order of operations. Later on, I will get to addition. So I need to square all of my x values. So let's do that. Okay, so negative 2 squared is 4, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and so on. Now, make sure when you're doing this, you don't just try to speed through them like I am. Uh, keep in mind, I do the math in my videos before I actually run through a video, so I'm not too worried about having made a mistake here. But again, be really careful because if you make any little mistakes here, you're going to get nailed for it so many times, uh, parts A, B, C, D, all the way through I, and it's really not worth it. Take a lot of time to double check your results here. Okay, so I've got my x squared values. And so because I've dealt with my exponent, I can now go back and focus on my sum, 
part, my sum of x squared, because I've already dealt with all of the x squared. So I've moved down my list, and now I've got exponents. There is no division or multiplication, but I can do it in my addition. So I just have to add up that entire list. And when you add up that entire list, uh, let's just bring it into view here. When we add this up, what do we get? Uh, this comes out to be 262. Okay, so 262 is the result for the sum of x squared. If I had tried to work out the sum of x in brackets squared, this is what I this is what I would have gotten. Let's uh, let's clean this up a little bit. All right, the sum of x we know is 40. And so if I wanted the sum of x squared in this way, within brackets, it's just 40 squared. That's 1,600. Let me uh, make that a little more clear. This is going to be my sum of x, which is 40, square that, and I get 1,600. Obviously, this is very different from 262. So you can see that this is potentially a huge error you might make. So just try to avoid that when you're going through. Many of these formulas will call for the sum of x squared, and some of them will call for both the sum of x squared and the sum of x in brackets squared. Okay, so now that we've got uh, these taken care of, we can actually start to answer some of these uh, questions. So um, my next video, I'll do part A.